Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, today is Saturday, September 18th, 2021. Let's challenge a heavyweight champ. In fact, let's challenge the guy I think is the best in the heavyweight division. Tyson Fury made a statement the other day that Anthony Joshua, one of his rivals, has never fought a heavyweight who is in his prime. Right? That's the statement. And of course, you're supposed to then realize that, oh, uh, Dylan White was fresh off of a uh, suspension. Uh, Vladimir Klitschko had been out of the ring for a year and, of course, had already been beaten by Tyson Fury. Uh, Alexander Povetkin was an older fighter um, when he fought Anthony Joshua, right? What I want people to do is to just focus on two fighters. Both of them had belts at the time that Anthony Joshua fought them. Right? In the comment section of this video, tell me how old Joseph Parker was when he fought Anthony Joshua in a unification match. That match should not be overlooked. Understand, both men going into that match were unbeaten. Let's talk about another guy who was unbeaten. I believe he was around 30 years old. At the time he fought Anthony Joshua, he had a heavyweight title at that time. And that was Charles Martin. Right? Understand, Joshua wins that fight, takes Martin's title by stoppage. Was Charles Martin unbeaten at the time with a share of the heavyweight title? Past his prime. Right? To the champion, Tyson Fury, let me just say, player, this is not the 1970s. This is not the 1980s. It's 2021. People are online. They're reviewing film. They're reviewing records. They're going to hold you accountable when you make an erroneous statement. Right? The bottom line is Anthony Joshua has fought at least two guys who were in their prime who had heavyweight titles at the time of the fights, right? Now, while I don't believe that Anthony Joshua is Tyson Fury, I think Fury is the top shelf in the division, let's at least give Joshua his due. Let's shift gears. You know, it's a sad day. It is a sad day when Arguably the best in the sport, pound for pound. Terrence Crawford, in an interview, says, you know, I'm so glad I finally get to fight a PBC guy, Sean Porter, so I can prove myself to the public. Think about how loaded that line is. It lets you know that there are guys with PBC who, for whatever reason, have passed up on the opportunity to fight one of the sport's very best pound-for-pound -pound fighters. Right? Something is wrong in boxing when that happens. Let me also say this, too, and I don't say it lightly. It also suggests that the PBC is too busy fighting each other in-house. Right? That they're an island that hasn't exposed themselves to the very best out there outside of the premier boxing champion setup. So you have a fighter, David Benavides, right? David Benavides, who wasn't always with PBC, has said that he believes he beats Jamal Charlo. Right to Benavides, let me just say, tell us something we don't know. I'd like to know how Jamal Charlo 
could be a contemporary of Canelo, of Golovkin, of Danny Jacobs, and somehow find a way not to fight any of them. Right? Understand, in the moment, these fighters are getting cash, they're keeping their titles, right? His big fights are who? Matt Korobov, who I thought he lost to. Let's just be blunt. And um, Derevianchenko, who, let's face it, you know, isn't on the level with a Canelo or with a Golovkin. Right? Even though I privately felt the Revianchenko beat Golovkin. Right? Understand the problem Jamal Charlo is going to have, too. Right? Number one, the family problem. He has a brother, Jamal Charlo, who's actually been more ambitious in his career. Right? Who's fought Erickson Lubin? Who's fought Rosario? Who's fought Castano? Who actually tried to become undisputed at 154 pounds, right? You can imagine when it's Thanksgiving dinner and the whole family's there, when it's Christmas dinner and the whole family's there and people are exchanging gifts, you know, let's just say if you're the uncle and you're looking at these two guys, whatever you think about their abilities, you understand that it's Jamel Charlo who has tried to see how good he is against the rest of the world. Right? Let's go one step further. You know, at 168, Lord knows you've had a lot of big names. Why is it that it's the same guy, Canelo, who has decided, okay, I'll fight an unbeaten Callum Smith, then pivots? Right? This is after, by the way, going to light heavyweight. It's not like Canelo sitting around. Right? After he beats Kovalev, Canelo comes back to 168. He pivots. And then, of course, he says, you know, Billy Joe Saunders is unbeaten. Let me fight him. Right? Of course, both of those fights took place after Canelo, of course, jumps to 168 and says, Rocky Fielding has a title. Let me fight him. If all of these guys are available for Canelo to fight, and Canelo beat them all, then how are all of these guys unavailable for Jamal Charlo to fight? Excuse me, Jamal Charlo to fight. I don't want to insult Jamal Charlo. Right? So, yeah, when I hear that a guy like David Benavides who's still unbeaten, who's had the belt at 168, is wishfully thinking about fighting Jamal Charlo. Right? Yeah, you better believe when that fight is announced, that bet's going to make itself for me. I know Benavides is the real deal. Even now, I'm not so sure about Jamal Charlo. I think Charlo has a lot of talent. I look on the films, I say, hey, he's interesting. But there's a Swen Atke component to his career. Let me just pivot back to heavyweight. Think about it. This division would be locked up. Legacies would have already been made. Had Anthony Joshua simply decided to Give Deontay Wilder 50%. Right, folks? Understand. Wilder, when he held a share of the title, Joshua could have fought. Right? The winner, let's say it's Anthony Joshua, would have had his star shine that much brighter. You wouldn't have competitors like Tyson Fury, openly saying, hey, this Joshua guy hasn't fought anybody in his prime. Right? You, the boxing public, would have already seen a fighter many would call undisputed at heavyweight, right? 
obviously I have a problem with that because I believe the lineal is Tyson Fury. You can give me hell as you've always done in the comment section of this video over that. But understand, the winner of Joshua Fury would have been king of the world. Right? Tyson Fury at the time was in boxing Siberia. Well, what you had was a blown opportunity. People need to understand what economists call the opportunity cost of their actions. Right? Don't be foolish. If you have a challenge from Deontay Wilder and Wilder was willing to fight you in your backyard, understand, even with a 50-50 split, you're actually benefiting because you're getting 50% of the purse. You're getting as much of the purse as the other guy is. And, of course, you get to fight in front of your fans. You don't have to cross the Atlantic and have the disastrous results that happened when Joshua fought Andy Ruiz the first time on American soil. Right? Joshua would have been fighting at home. Now, those two guys didn't understand what was involved. Boxing luminaries like Lennox Lewis felt a need to comment on it, and Lennox Lewis at the time said, hey guys, make the fight. Because Lewis, the vet, understood, this is your chance for legacy. Well, understand, the legacy is not there. Deontay Wilder went on to lose to Tyson Fury, so now you have Tyson Fury in the mix. Now Joshua, of course, goes from having a fight I thought he'd win against Deontay Wilder to now having reporters bringing up a fight I don't believe he can win involving Tyson Fury. You have Joshua saying, hey, okay, you know, I admit I need to fight Fury, right? Of course, many of us, let me raise my hand, don't believe he beats Usyk. Someone here online asked me the question of, hey, you know, would I take Usyk if the odds were even money? Right? The answer is yes, I would. I believe Usyk is a better fighter than Anthony Joshua. Just understand, Deontay Wilder, and I don't blame Wilder, right? Because Wilder was prepared to cross the Atlantic. I know there's a Joshua crowd out there that wants you to believe that Wilder didn't want the fight. you got to be kidding me, right? He was prepared to go to the UK. He said so. Right? I don't blame Wilder, but just to understand. Wilder lost to Fury. I don't see Wilder beating Fury. Right? Fury would have to beat himself in that third fight. Wilder's best chance was when Fury was back from witness protection. Right? Fury had just fought two heavyweights who we haven't heard from since and was rusty. Right? The first fight was. Wilder's best shot. Well, think about Joshua. Joshua goes from having a fight against Wilder, where if he wins that fight, much of the world would have considered him the undisputed heavyweight champion. Right? He goes from that hurdle, which I believe he could have climbed, to now having to beat Usyk, a tougher fight by itself. Right? A fight against a fighter who Tony Bellew, a former Usyk opponent, has just bluntly said is going to be the most talented fighter Joshua has ever faced or will face in his career. In other words, Tony Bellew, boxing lifer, is telling you that Usyk is tougher than the older version of Vladimir Klitschko that Joshua beat in a fight that had Joshua on the canvas in a fight that went well into the later rounds. Right, so I'll just say this to the PBC guys, and I don't mean to upset the apple cart, the empire that Al Heyman has built that much, but to the PBC guys, you need to ask yourself what's going on. Has Jamal Charlo helped himself? by being extremely selective in picking his opponents in his career. Don't get me wrong, it's great. He's had a little bit of a reign 
um, you know, great. He's been able to pay some bills and stuff like that. Is there anyone watching this video who is going to think of Jamal Charlo, who's unbeaten right now? Who is unbeaten right now? The way they think of the great middleweights in history. Right? When you think of Marvelous Marvin Hagler, I have to laugh, I can't even hide it. When you think of Marvelous Marvin Hagler, when you think of Bernard Hopkins in his prime, when you think of Carlos Bonzo, do you think of Jamal Charlo? Right? Also, people need to ask themselves. You know, Sean Porter is a guy who went out and fought Keith Thurman when Keith Thurman was unbeaten. Right? Sean Porter fought Errol Spence when Errol Spence was unbeaten. Right? Folks, why has it taken so long? for Sean Porter to fight Terrence Crawford. Right? Understand, Crawford, this is the second act of Crawford's career. Right? Crawford was undisputed at 140. Right? Crawford's just like Usyk. Right? He's unbeaten. He mastered a division. He's gained weight to be in the other division. Folks, he's been around. Hasn't even a warrior like Sean Porter shortchanged himself by waiting so long to fight Terence Crawford? Finally, let's talk about Clarissa Shields. She gave an interview where she mentioned that boxing was extremely sexist. Right? Well, extremely is my word. <laughs> you know where I stand on it. But boxing is sexist, right? Now, let me just say, you know, we'll overlook the dearth and that's what it is, the dearth of female referees in male boxing matches, right? As if, as if you have to be male to be a good referee, right? You know, that's how you can really tell, by the way, the level of bias. It's when you notice that there are no people of a certain type in positions that don't require genealogy, right? And by the way, that's 99.99999% of all positions, right? We'll have a small carve out for, you know, um, sperm donors and people wanting certain types of kids and stuff like that. But just to understand how ridiculous the scene is for women in boxing, right? Why do they have two-minute rounds? Understand, the only group of male fights that have two-minute rounds are when they're pulling a Mike Tyson in his 50s out of retirement for several years. And they have him fighting Roy Jones, right, who I'm sure will never retire. <laughs> they have him fighting Roy Jones, who's also in his 50s. Right, that's when guys say, you know what, this might be, da you know, this might be dangerous. So let's go from three to two minute rounds. But yet in women's boxing, somehow we're supposed to believe that three minute rounds are too dangerous for women. Folks, isn't that paternalistic? Isn't that view archaic? You know what, I've watched WNBA games where you know, I don't see all the women falling down from exhaustion and being overwhelmed in the fourth quarter of games. Right? If women can survive WNBA games, soccer games, I don't understand why they can't survive three-minute rounds. Right? It's absolutely ridiculous. Also, you know, I've been here online talking about the fact that women... Well, Clarissa Shields has one of boxing's best jabs, right? She's not a knockout artist, folks. If you look at her closely, she's really a stylist, 
right? She lives off that jab. That jab pays the bills. Well, let me just say, it's interesting. You know, I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the male ego. But it's interesting that you never have contenders calling out Clarissa Shields. You never have guys saying, hey, I can beat Clarissa Shields. We have a lot of gimmick fights out there, don't we? MMA guys who have never fought in boxing. Fighting boxers who have had belts. Right? We've had those fights. But yet we don't have the MMA guy who's never fought in a boxing match fighting a championship female boxer. Right? Has anyone figured out why that's so? You know, if I'm going to wonder about whether or not some MMA guy can beat Jake Paul, you know, why am I so sure that Tyron Woodley could be Clarissa Shields. So this thing's evolving. When I was a kid, they wouldn't even allow women to box, right? That's how bad the patriarchy was. Let's hope that boxing gets back to talent, right? Instead of classifying people based on gender, let's hope boxing gets back to talent, right? Gender is really this generation's color line, isn't it, right? Back in the day, you know, uh, African Americans couldn't get a shot at Jack Dempsey, even though De Je Dempsey's main sparring partner was African American, right? We understand that color lines existed. Well, right now you have a gender line in boxing, don't you? It extends to the rules. One of the best things boxing could do is to say, hey, there's no reason for us to have two-minute rounds in female boxing matches, right? Have that for when older fighters fight. I got no problem with that, right? Mike Tyson comes back, you say, okay, we'll make this a two-minute round. Okay, I got no problem with that. But younger women should have the choice, shouldn't they, to go three rounds. They don't need some Yahoo State Athletic Commission to tell them, oh, because you're female, three rounds is too tough. How do you square that with female distance running and with WNBA games in the real world? Right? If three-minute rounds turn into wars of attrition in women's boxing, well, that's what you have right now in men's boxing. What's the difference? Anyway, that's how I see it this Saturday, September 18th, 2021. Let me know what you think. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.